in Arabic, they have three separate words that are very clear what you're talking about, and all of them deal with what we use in English, one word, prayer. prayer. Because when you go like this, what are you doing? Praying. Praying. Well, we do it with our hands open because we're more beggars, you know, in front of God. Nice. We want to catch something if it's coming. Nice. So, but it's the same meaning. Yeah. And this thing is called dua. Dua. It means to call. Like when we call people to come to be. The call to uh, prayer? No, no. When we call somebody to come and listen to the message of God, we give him da'wa. Come on. I'm inviting you to come and listen to something. All right. So this is da'wa. This is one kind of prayer. But then there's a kind where you just unceasingly keep God in your consciousness. And it's not out loud necessarily. No. You can, but you'd be saying like, yep. praise God, praise God, praise sure. God. Which is, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, God is greatest, God is greatest. In your mind, you're thinking, I love God. Oh, he's so wonderful. I extol your greatness. Oh, Lord, I love you so much. And it's in the back of your mind, and this is called dhikr. It's a remembrance in the back of the mind and in the heart. And, and you know, it can get out loud too, but it's the unceasing prayer. That's it. So this solves the problem in Christianity. For me, I can say, yeah, I can do that. I can think about God. And then when I need something, or I want to thank you, thank you for this, and now I want this, which is what we usually do. Then there is this, which you don't have in Christianity uh, anymore, except in a Catholic church. You still have this. Occasionally, you will see a priest or the Pope who will bow down and put his head on the ground. Oh, yeah. And then this is still maintained in Islam. Oh, yeah. Very, okay. very much. So the falling on the face that we find in the Bible, the bowing down to Almighty God, which is still is preserved. It, uh, it is still partially preserved in Catholic Church, but a lot of the other churches are totally away from that. They don't know about it. So uh, this ritual is called Salah. And this is something special that when a person goes like this, he's basically throwing the whole world away, yep. knocking everything out of his way, and it's now direct communication, direct hookup between me and him. And nothing going to disturb him. He's going to go for the next three to five minutes to do his salah and putting his hands like this. And then he begins to recite from the Quran. And at a certain point, he will bend and bow. That's right back up and then his head on the ground sitting and then back on the ground and come back up and that is called a raqqa from this thing called rakua a bending over a bowing so a full complete one is called a raqqa and when a person does this in five times a day he's considered in good standing with the lord and in each one of these times he has chance to be forgiven to remember about god and then real important after each one is to ask god oh god forgive me and then ask for whatever you need and all of this is something he's doing five times a day. Now, ask yourself a question. How could a guy do all this five times a day and be a bad person? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he asked, if a man has a river flowing by his house and he bathes in it five times a day, is there any dirt on his body? And they, he said, and this is the same way as the Salah is for the believer. Really? But this is not in the case of somebody who doesn't do a Salah. He says he's Muslim, but he doesn't do a Salah. No, how are you? Well, this is prescribed five times a day. 